Hello ladies and gentlemen, Devin from Decon here, and this is the new Dell Inspiron all-in-one PC. Last year Dell knocked it out of the park with their all-in-one as it was an absolute beast. It had a powerful AMD Ryzen 8 core processor, a beastly RX 580 graphics card, an accurate 4K display, and it was completely upgradable and easily accessible. This year Dell is taking a different approach. Gone is the Ryzen processor, gone is the AMD GPU, and gone is the 4K display. They're still giving you plenty of power, however, just not as much. Overall, it seems to be a bit more focused and refined, but is it actually any better? Let's take a look. The Inspiron still retains an amazingly small footprint as its body remains virtually unchanged. It has the footprint of a 24 inch all-in-one and just below the screen we can see a space gray grille which has some light branding and is also home to our stereo speakers. The speakers are in stereo configuration and gone is the subwoofer from last year. Overall, the speakers are pretty great. With the absence of the subwoofer, there's no low end to speak of, but the mids and highs are above average for a desktop. In terms of loudness, they'll fill a room with ease as they reach a maximum of 86 decibels and generally hover around 80 decibels at max volume. Also located on the front is our power button, and just below that and along the underside is an input selector. The input selector is there to switch between the PC and an HDMI compatible device. This is due to the PC having an HDMI in port along the rear. This is great if you're living in a smaller apartment or if you're a college student living in a dorm room and you need to use one screen as your PC and to play your PlayStation 4, your Nintendo Switch, or just to watch movies on. Adjacent our HDMI in port is our HDMI out port. This is an HDMI 1.4 port which can output up to 4K resolutions but lacks HDR support. Adjacent the two HDMI ports is the rest of our ports. All the ports are located along the rear of the Inspiron and in a straight row just behind the stand. First, we have an always cool Ethernet port, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.1 ports, an audio out port, and lastly is the power port. We also have a few more ports along the left edge. Our SD card slot remains and just below that we have a USB Type-C port. Sadly the USB Type-C port is now the Thunderbolt variety and external GPU support is out of the cards on this one. Below that we have another USB 3.1 port but of the Type-A variety. And adjacent to that we have my favorite port, the headphone jack. Despite the large screen, the Inspiron still retains a small footprint. This is due to Dell's Infinity Edge display. Minus the large chin, the display is nearly borderless and it looks fantastic. The Inspiron has a 27 inch IPS touch screen display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Dell is using an LG panel here and it's mightily impressive as it's using advanced in-cell touch technology. This essentially means the touch sensors are actually embedded in the LCD cell itself rather than having a separate LCD screen and a touch screen layered atop one another. I personally don't find touch screens all that useful on desktops as your main point of interaction is the keyboard and mouse and generally the screen is further away from you than a regular touch device such as a phone or a laptop. The tech is amazing however and it works as advertised, so if touch screens on desktops are your thing, you're going to love this one. Overall the screen is very accurate as the sRGB color accuracy is fantastic as it is 97% accurate. NTSC and Adobe RGB accuracy is average however as they cover 70 and 74% of the respective color gamut. Let's jump back to the Infinity Edge display one last time. Due to there being thin bezels around the top edge, Dell was forced to relocate the web camera underneath the screen. This caused that whole nostril cam effect we all know and love. Rather than having the web camera below the screen, they've actually hidden it in a compartment within the screen, and it's right here. This not only resolves nostril cam, but it also doubles as a privacy feature as you can open and close it at your convenience. It works flawlessly and is incognito with the rest of the design. There's also infrared sensors built in for Windows Hello sign-in, and the web camera is now a 1080p camera, and is one of the best I've seen on a desktop thus far. In a well-lit room, it looks great, and in a poorly lit room, it looks better than most. Also, my nostrils no longer feel violated. Around back, the internals are covered by this plastic cover here. Accessing the internals is not so simple this time around. You must pry this plastic piece up here, unscrew two screws to remove the stand, and then you're able to remove the rear cover. With those removed, you can finally access the internals. As you can see, there is a lot of empty internal space and it looks like Dell is using a mini ITX motherboard. Much like last year's model, all the internal components are fully upgradable or replaceable, even the CPU. Also like last year's model, the GPU is still soldered onto the motherboard and cannot be replaced. Let's start with this large fan here. 
This is our sole cooling solution for the entire PC, and during general use it was always audible as it hovered just under 40 decibels. And during intensive use such as video editing or gaming, it gets noticeably louder as it increases to 49 decibels. Connected to the fan is this copper heatsink which feeds directly to the CPU and GPU. Let's take a look at the CPU first. The processor is an 8th generation Intel i7-8700T processor. It's a 2.4GHz 6 core processor, and it's an absolute beast. Single core performance is great and when compared to the Ryzen CPU used in last year's Inspiron, the i7 processor actually outperforms the Ryzen. But multi-core performance is where we see a decrease in performance when compared to the Ryzen 7. And that's to be expected as the Ryzen was utilizing 8 cores rather than the 6 cores the i7 is using. Throttling is a non-issue as it remained consistently above the base frequency for the entire render. Overall, the performance of the i7 is still excellent and allows the Inspiron to be a very powerful computer, and one capable for professional use. Editing 4K videos is a breeze, and the i7 processor never buckled once, as it edited this video in just under 20 minutes. Following the heatsink further reveals our GPU. Dell ditched AMD's graphics for Nvidia this time around, as a GTX 1050 is included. On smaller indie titles, fluid 1080p can be achieved effortlessly, but on more demanding AAA titles, you'll be lucky to get anywhere near 45 frames per second on 1080p, even on medium settings. The GTX 1050 allows for a nice gaming experience, but it's a definite downgrade when compared to the RX 580 found in last year's model. And a lack of Thunderbolt support means you can't add an external GPU if you want to increase this gaming performance, or to allow for VR compatibility. Just adjacent our CPU is a 256GB M.2 solid state drive, and just below that is two DDR4 RAM slots. 16GB is installed, but can easily be upgradable to 32GB if desired. And lastly, just adjacent our RAM, and below the fan is a 2.5 inch 1TB hard drive. With the downgrades to the major components, there is a positive, however, as the Inspiron as a whole draws less power and is more energy efficient. Last year's Inspiron came with a monster of a power adapter. It was a 330 watt power adapter and it was absurdly large. This time around, the power adapter is much smaller and is a 180 watt power adapter. I honestly don't have very many negatives on this PC as it's great overall, but I do dislike the included keyboard and mouse. They're both wireless and they require this USB dongle for them to work. The keyboard is your basic black and typing is nice as it has great travel and is very tactile. The mouse is also black and works well, but the ergonomics aren't the greatest as my hand tended to get a bit sore over long periods of use. Overall, they are both very light, feel extremely cheap, and are as generic as they come. And lastly, I still don't love the stand. It's your basic pedestal stand which is extremely limited and only offers around 50 degrees of tilt adjustment. There is no swivel or height adjustment either, so placement may be an issue. Overall, the Inspiron is fantastic. Is it as revolutionary as last year? I don't think so. There are downgrades across the board and it is not as powerful, nor is it as capable of a gaming PC, and the internals are not as easily accessible. Also, the touch display is not worth the trade-off of losing the 4K panel from last year. Having said that, the Inspiron still retains its upgrade ability, something that's still rare for an all-in-one PC, and it should provide more than enough power for the professional user and content creator as well. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please send me your likes. If you enjoy my content, send me your subs. And as always, thank you for stopping by. I'll see you next time.